Logging is critical for debugging production issues. So in a recent member's live stream, I was building a Maui application and it kept failing in all sorts of ways. Now, luckily I was running in development on my local machine, so I could just attach a debugger and see exactly what the error was right away, but I was worried about production. So what would I do if a customer reached out and was having an issue how would I debug that? Without any logs for that customer's session, it would be really hard to find out what happened and what caused the error. So in our Maui application, we decided to set up logging, specifically with Serialog as one of the members suggested. So the first thing we had to do, of course, is install the required packages for Serialog. So of course, that would be the Serialog package itself, so over 1 billion downloads, let's grab that. Now, I also wanted to register Serialog in dependency injection and then register it as an underlying provider to the .NET generic logger so that the rest of our application could reference the .NET generic logger rather than Serialog directly. And this would allow us to potentially switch out our logger if we ever had to for some reason. So the Serialog docs had two sections, setting up a new console app and setting up a new web app. Obviously the console app docs don't provide a dependency injection implementation, but the web docs do. As we can see, there's a helpful use Serialog that we would just call on the host and that would set up Serialog. But this is called Serialog.ASP.NET Core. Doesn't seem like the right thing to use for a Maui application. But the Serialog ASP.NET Core subproject actually references Serialog extensions hosting. And as we can see, this package, not ASP.NET Core specific, but this package is the one that includes the extension methods for registering Serialog in dependency injection through the .NET generic host. So let's install that Serialog extensions hosting, and let's also install syncs. So syncs are basically where we write logs to. So there's the console sync that writes log events to the console slash terminal. Do not bother with this for Maui applications because this will not write to the debug console, what we actually want is serialog.syncs.debug. So it writes logs to the debug output window, and we'll see where that is in just a second. So let's install that. And obviously debug logs are great for debugging, but for production purposes, we wanna persist our logs. So we're also gonna install the file sync. So serialog.syncs.file, let's install. And that should be everything that we need to install. So if we come over to our Maui program.cs, we might think to come over to this builder and do a use serialog as we saw in the hosting docs. However, use serialog is intended for the host builder on the .NET generic host, and this is not a host builder. This is a Maui app builder. So what a shame we can't actually add serialog in this manner. But luckily, the serialog hosting extensions do offer an extension method that allows us to register and set up serialog on our service collection for dependency injection. So we just have to do a services and then add serialog. And then we just have to pass in a serialog logger here. So we can create one of those from a logger configuration and just call create logger. So let's import all this from serialog. And there we go. So this will register serialog in dependency injection, but it'll also register serialog as a provider for the .NET generic logger. So now somewhere else in our application, let's just grab a page here. We can define a field here, which will be an I logger for our home view model. We'll just call it logger. And this I logger is gonna be from Microsoft extensions logging. So this is the generic .NET logger that I keep referencing. So let's import that, get it through the constructor. And how about after we load some data here, we'll take our logger and just do an info log and say loaded streaks. We'll do some structured logging here and log the amount of streaks that we loaded. So now we're gonna sign in and load our streaks. And if we look at our .NET generic logger, we can look at the provider and we can see we have our serialog logger provider. So serialog is set up, let's continue here, and nothing gets logged anywhere. So this is where syncs come in and we need to tell serialog where to write our logs to. So really straightforward, we just need to tell serialog to write to the debug console, which we can do since we installed the debug sync. And hooray, here we go. This time we got our log. So as we talked about writing to the debug console, nice for development, but not useful at all for debugging production issues. Instead, we wanna persist our log somewhere. So this is where the file sync that we installed comes into play. So using that sync, we're also gonna to write to a file. And a good place to write files for .NET Mali applications or really any desktop application would be the app data directory. So using file system current app data directory, this will be the app data directory plus the application specific path 
that our Maui application is assigned to. So it would be the app data folder, plus I think our app ID GUID as a subfolder, and then our logs would be in that folder. And I think if you don't have an app ID GUID, it would fall back to this application ID as the subfolder. Regardless, we'll check that out in a little bit once we start writing logs. And this path also has to specify the log file name. So we'll just name ours log.txt. And one last thing I like to do for file logs is to set a rolling interval to something like a day. And basically what this will do is give us a new log file for every single day. And the nice thing about this is that it prevents log files from getting enormous. So if a customer has to send you logs, they can just send you logs from the specific day that they were having issues rather than logs from the past four years. All right, so let's hit our log line. There we go, we got it in the debug console. Now let's head over to app data and we're gonna go to local packages and our app ID GUID is E299E and then a bunch of stuff, which perfect, we see that right here. Let's select that, go to local state and we got our single log file, let's open that up and sweet, we got our logs. So now in production, whenever a customer has issues, they can just send us the log file and we can search through here and see what went wrong. So in summary, nothing too crazy here. We added the required packages for logging with serial log, including serial log itself, a helper package for registering serial log in dependency injection as the .NET generic logger provider, and a couple syncs for logging our logs to the debug window, as well as an external file. Then we simply use the add serial log extension method and passed in our configured logger and did some structured logging. So hopefully you can implement serial log in your own .NET Mali application so that you can see what's happening to customers in production environments.